Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Finally, another books weekly. You may or may not have noticed that last week I didn't film one. Simply because the week before last I didn't read anything or hardly anything. It was not much better this week but a little bit so at least I have enough to show you. And I didn't not read because of a reading slump if such a thing exists at all or whatever but just because of the physicality of time because I had 14 to 16 hour work days every day also on the weekends and as I'm not fortunate like other booktubers who can survive on less than six hours sleep I can't and that left just enough time to you know look for food eat and do some personal hygiene so there was just no time to read but anyway this week was a little better so I can at least tell you about the books that I've read since the last books weekly and the first book is one that I started two weeks ago or something and finally finished last week and that is Shirley Jackson The Haunting of Hill House the book was first published in 1959 and I've heard about it, I had it on my shelf even, but somehow I never gotten around to reading it. You, you know how these things are. Sometimes you just, you hear great things about a book, but you don't pick it up. And I finally did, thanks to a Goodreads book club, Readers Inc., which is run by Conrad over at Seven Days at Sea. I will leave a link to the Goodreads book club down below and also to Conrad's channel. Um, and you should join our book club in from November on we will read the whole of Proust and for those who don't want to participate there will be a, a read-along of um, Alice Munro's short stories so there's something for everybody and it's really a great active book club so check it out but anyway in October our read was Shirley Jackson's book so I finally got to it and as you might remember from my previous books weekly because I've read then about a third or something I really loved it and that didn't change when reading through and finishing it it's a fantastic book it's the perfect spooky read for those of you who celebrate Halloween or want nevertheless something spooky for October it's a group of people gathering in a haunted house the house Hill House and one of them is a more or less a scientist and he wants to investigate the haunting of the house. That's the premise and then we follow those characters while they experience all the strange things that are happening in the house because strange things happen. But what makes it so special apart from the really superb writing is that it's more a psychological thriller than it is a horror story because you never really know as a reader whether things actually happened or whether it's just in the participants minds especially one of the participants Eleanor who is more or less the main character we follow along seems to be quite off and getting worse when the book progresses so you you have this this tension and this spookiness but you you don't really know what happens and that makes it at least in my opinion that made it so great so if you're still looking for a spooky read at the end of November and you haven't read The Haunting of Hill House pick it up because it's a fantastic book and the second book I managed to read was Anne Valenti's Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down and Valenti is a young contemporary American writer from Missouri originally. She wrote mainly short stories, won a couple of prizes with those, and Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down is her first novel. It, it was just published beginning of October, and I've heard of it through Steve's channel, channel over at Steve Donahue. Um, I will leave a link down below. Um, one of his book mails, con uh, book hauls, contained this book and it sounded interesting so I read it and it was, I have mixed feelings about it. it it's, it's very well written certainly, it's a fast-paced read 
most of the time it has some dragging and sluggishness sometimes in the middle um, and but let me tell you about the story first the premise of the book is a Columbine like shooting in a high school a young high school student Caleb who enters the school with guns and guns down 28 students plus seven staff members and teachers so 35 people are dead this is happened when the book opens and then we follow the aftermath through four high school friends who are in a club together uh, a club quote unquote club that is writing the yearbook for their senior year they are then supposed to write the yearbook for their class and although I, I really thought the premise was intriguing and, and something that is very, yeah, now, because things like that happen, I, I, I was not convinced with the book. First of all, the, the point of view, I had difficulties with that. The book is written, main, most of the book is written in the first person plural point of view, so we. I don't know whether this is a thing at the moment for, for young writers, uh, especially writers who teach or go to creative writing classes, because it's not the first book that has been published recently that is written in that we perspective. And I, I always consider this a very difficult perspective to do, because you don't get to really individualize the characters. And although in, in Valente's book she switches from the we perspective to those four individual characters and then writes about he, Matt and Nick and Zola and Christina. Um, but still, I, I never really felt that those four characters became individuals. I also didn't like the postmodern quirks that the, the chapters in which the story is told are alternating with chapters in which, like an essay, you get information about blood circulation and how much uh, temperature you need to burn a body. That I didn't like the postmodern quirks when postmodernism was still a thing, and I don't like them still. In addition, I thought the story was overloaded because it is already quite a story to deal with four people in the aftermath of an event like that. But after the shooting, one by one, the houses of the families of the victims get burned down. So you have the aftermath of the shooting and then you have this constant attacks on, on houses and those people, the families of the victims, from the school shooting and die also. That's not, not a spoiler, by the way, because it, it happens really soon in the book. But I won't tell you how that uh, firing, uh, inc how these firing incidents are resolved. So it, it's, it felt overloaded and therefore superficial. And the psychology of the four characters also felt superficial a lot of times, like this, these typical standard things happening, the boyfriend gets mean, others try to have sex in order to forget, uh, you are asked the question, how are you, and the answer is fine all the time, so it, it didn't really feel, yeah, it felt shallow in a way, uh, which, was a, which was a shame, I thought, because uh, I thought the writing was good, the premise was good, so the book could have been something, but it, it was in, in any case not for me. So if you read it, um, let me know what you thought, but I gave it two and a half stars uh, on Goodreads in the end because I, I just didn't think it was that good, unfortunately. And the last book is the book that I've started this week, and that is Sarah Bakewell at the Existentialist Café, Freedom, Being and Apricot Cocktails. But before I talk about the book a little bit more, I want to draw your attention to Nonfiction November. I don't know whether you've heard already, but two booktubers, Gemma and Olive, they host in November 
non-fiction reads. They want to encourage us to read more non-fiction, which I think is a fantastic idea. I will leave links to their announcement videos down below and also to the Goodreads group that you can join if you want to participate. So the idea is just to read more non-fiction in the month of November. No matter whether you normally don't read any non-fiction at all, so just read one book, or whether you regularly read non-fiction and try to increase the amount of non-fiction books you read, it, it doesn't matter. So come join us and try to read more non-fiction in November. But because my workload is so crazy at the moment, um, I, I thought I'd, I'd cheat a little bit and uh, start in October already to have a head start. Um, although I think it will be better in November, but still, I, I cheated and I started with Sarah Bakewell's at the Existentialist Cafe. So, back to her and her book. Bakewell is an, a British and English non-fiction writer, contemporary writer. She wrote a fantastic biography of Montaigne. So if you are into non-fiction, and especially the more biography type of non-fiction, you should check out her uh, website, because she wrote more than the Montaigne book. And her most recent work at the Existentialist Café, which was published, I think, beginning of March of this year, is about philosophy. It's about Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, the existentialism in philosophy, but also the roots of, of those philosophers, the German philosophers Heidegger and Husserl, the Danish philosopher Kierkegaard. And it's a book for you, because it's, it's really great. I'm halfway through and it's really great. Um, it's a book for you if you are interested in philosophy. You don't necessarily need any previous knowledge of it. Sarah Bakewell is able to give us summaries of the most important thoughts and themes of these existentialist philosophers. And you, you don't need to know anything before you read the book. But you, you need to be interested in philosophy. Because even though uh, Bakewell mixes these explanations about the philosophy with anecdotes about the philosopher's lives and she she leads us from the 1930s into uh, the era after the second world war so there's also a lot of biographical information and and like i said mixed with anecdotes which is really entertaining and also very interesting to read but there are philosophical pages so to say in, in the book and they are not dull by any means, but if you're not into philosophy at all, then it's probably not a book for you. But if you are, you should certainly try it. I, Like I said, I, I really love it uh, halfway through now. Yeah, about halfway through. And I think the writing is perfect. The explanations are to the point and very precise and very understandable for people who haven't studied philosophy. So I, I encourage you to read it, and I'm looking forward to, to finishing it, hopefully um, in November. So this was it for today for my a bit meager books weekly, but I managed to talk 12 minutes, even though it's only three books, so I'm a blabbermouth. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and talk to me in the comments. You know that I always appreciate comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.